we have a simple equation for weight and the equation actually comes straight from Newton's second law. If we start with Newton's second law and you remember mathematically that's F equals MA, force equals mass times acceleration. And we're thinking of the case where we have a mass, we'll call it M, and it's just released, it's dropped near the Earth's surface so it's allowed to fall. So gravity is pulling down on it and that downward force we call weight and we typically just write a capital W for weight. And that represents the force on the object. And as a result of that, it accelerates down, and the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, which we call g. Well, if the force on the object is the object's weight, and the acceleration on the object is the acceleration due to gravity, which we call g, and the, the mass of the object is just m, then we get this equation, w equals mg. That's our equation for weight. The weight of an object is equal to its mass, which would be in kilograms, multiplied by g. And g is a known number. g is 9.8 meters per second squared if you're on the Earth near the surface. So we have this equation for weight, and it's nice to remember that this is simply a special case of Newton's second law. This equation here, F equals MA. We just have for our force, we have the weight, and for the acceleration, we have the acceleration due to gravity. So think of the weight as the force due to gravity, and the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. So this is Newton's second law applied to this specific case where we have an object that's just allowed to fall and is accelerating down due to gravity. And here's an example problem that makes use of that equation. A person has a mass of 65 kilograms. That's M, the mass. What is the weight? Well, we simply use the formula. The weight, W, is M times G. And we know both of those. The mass is 65 kilograms, and G is 9.8 meters per second squared. So we multiply those together. 65 times 9.8 comes out to 637 and we have kilograms times meters per second squared and a kilogram times a meter per second squared is a newton so this is 637 newtons now note that this is not 637 pounds okay we're not saying that this person weighs 637 pounds weight is a force so it ends up being measured in newtons because newtons is the unit the SI unit the standard unit for force now, in the second part of this problem, a person has a mass of 65 kilograms and they go to the moon. And on the moon, the acceleration due to gravity is less than on the Earth because the moon is smaller. And we're told here that it's 1.6 meters per second squared. What is the person's weight when he is on the moon? Well, the same equation applies, W equals mg, and the mass is still 65 kilograms. Now think about that. Mass, remember, is how much matter is there, how much material, how much stuff is there. If you go to the moon, all of you is on the moon. Your mass hasn't changed. But your weight has changed because g on the moon is only 1.6 meters per second squared. So when we do m times g, we're doing the mass times a much smaller gravitational pull. And it's the smaller gravity that gives us a smaller number for the weight. 65 times 1.6 comes out to 104 and again that's kilograms times meters per second squared which is newtons 104 newtons about one-sixth what it is on the earth now this problem should help you see the difference between mass and weight it should be clear that if you go to the moon your mass stays the same as when you're on earth but because the moon has less gravity the weight is much less on the moon than it was on earth so that's the difference between mass and weight mass is how much matter how much material material how much stuff there is there and weight is the downward pull of gravity on an object those two things mass and weight are obviously related but they're not the same thing